Okay, today we're going to be creating a boring log using GINT. So the first thing you would need to do is log into the remote desktop mapping computer, which is this guy right here. I've already done that. that up. Next, you want to start up GINT right here, and I've already done that as well to save some time. So here we go. We've got to start a new project, so we click on the new project button right here. We're going to go ahead and just clone it from this training here. Go ahead and call it demo. If you were going to create your own, you would be saving it in your project folder. But this is fine for, for a tutorial. Okay, so the way Git is, Git is set up, we've got the main the two tabs that I typically use are input and output. All right now we have nothing output, so we're going to focus on the input tab. Within the input tab, we have these sub-tabs down here. Project, borehole, sample, test, lithology, well, remarks, and CVT. Project is your basic info for the projects that's going to show up on the top of the boring log. So I'll just make some stuff up. Okay. Next, you're going to click over to Borehole, where you can input information for all of the borings you have. We're just going to do one, monitoring well one, and as you can see, as soon as you label that one, you have the option to start labeling more. We're only going to do one, though. Let's say it's 60 feet deep. What is the date you started? We have a drop-down list of contractors we've used in the past. If your contractor isn't on this list, you can just write it in right here, and it'll ask you if you want to add it to this list, which you can go ahead and do. Next, the date that, that you completed it. Surface elevation, if you have it. Borehole size. The method in which the borehole was, was uh, advanced. Again, we've got a drop-down menu of various uh, equipment we've used before. If yours isn't on here, like I said with the contractor, you can write it in, and it'll ask you if you want to add it to this list. Here you can uh, put who logged the hole. Again, drop-down list. If it was checked by someone, you can fill that in here. If you have notes, uh, general notes about the boring, um, you can that in here. Uh, for instance, if uh, location is, is estimated and not surveyed or um, any kind of special circumstances regarding this boring. You can also put in the depth at which you encounter water during drilling. You can also put in uh, where you found water after drilling. See that it was a little bit higher than that afterwards. There's other information on here. You can put uh, northern and easting information, etc. So next, I like to jump over to lithology. Here we can put in the actual soil and rock information. So I'm going to keep it simple and just do uh, one really thick layer of soil and then one layer or uh, one rock core runner. So let's say from zero to 55 feet, we had a silty sand. I mean a uh, candy silt. And then I'm going to just keep it really vague in here. So usually we do a type in all caps, and then our description follows. And we try to do it the same every time so that it's consistent. So we usually do color. And then the type of soil again. So right here we might have uh, silt, but over here we might put the whole thing, which would be a sandy silt in this case. We put the USCS classification followed by any other comments we might have. Um, this could be uh, presence or absence of structure or um, muscovite biotite content or how micaceous it is or any if any staining is present. Next, we put in either solid or dashed line type. 
solid if you if you have a, a good handle on where these zones begin and end, or dashed if you're kind of uh, inferring where they are. We're gonna go ahead and do solid. Next, we're gonna do a six foot run from 55 to 60 feet. We don't have a USCS classification for rock, so we just jump over here to our graph. We can put bedrock in. Put a competent bedrock here, or just bedrock if it's not competent bedrock, and then add in your description. And um, after your description, I like to also include some information about the fractures, how many they are, um, what you know, the, their high or low angle, anything like that, and also if there's any mechanical breaks in the core. Okay. I usually jump over then and add in my samples that I've taken. So let's say that we took a split spin sample at 54 feet down. Split spins are usually uh, 18 inches. From our type drop down menu, we select split spin. Our recovery, let's say we only got 12 inches of recovery. And our low counts, let's say it started out. Um, High, and then on the last six inches, um, maybe we didn't get any. Maybe we got an inch, maybe an inch over, over out of 50 ball counts. So then for our rock core run, that will start at 55 feet. We're going to do a five foot run, which is 60 inches. For type, we drop down to rock core. Let's say we got 100% recovery and a really high RQD. That's it for samples. And put in any remarks that we have. So maybe we took a PID measurement uh, from our split spin sample. So 54 feet. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't on the line. Um, 54 feet. Get a D. Had a reading of 0 0.2. And then, uh, we got auger refusal at 50, 55 feet, so maybe just below that, so that we don't get these two crowded together. Um, and then, we got auger refusal below ground surface. We also want to put in where we. may or may not be the same depth right here. If you uh, begin to core and didn't get any rock back at first, then you have to adjust this top competent rock depth right here. So those are the only uh, remarks I'm going to put in. Next, we can fill in our well information, assuming that we put a well in here. Uh, I've already written this stuff down, so I'll just fill it in for you. So our screen will be from 45 to 60 feet, so a 15-foot screen. The graphic for the screen is slot 11. They put the pointer in the center of this one. For our filter media, our sand pad, three feet above the top of the screen, and that is filter. This at the edge, type of sand. Type of sand we used. On top of the sand, we have a bit nice seal. And on top of that, we would have some nice ground. So after you finish putting in your lithology, any samples you took, any remarks you want to add in, and the well information if you have some. You can, uh, if you have test information, you can put that in. I usually don't. Uh, so once I've done these tabs, I usually go to output. I select the template I want to use. We typically use this 021510 template. There's a couple other ones, but this one works pretty well. That's the one we usually use. 
down to Borehole ID and select the borehole you want to look at. You can click this eye if you want to preview it. So this one has two pages. You can go to the second page and look at the information we just put in. So here's our screen. Here's our screen right here, surrounded by the filter screen pack, or uh, filter media, or sand pack, bit night seal on top of that, and then cement ground on top of that. Over here is our remarks that we added in, our PID measurement, and where we hit auger refusal. You can see our split spoon sample right here, and our rock floor sample right here. First page is where our project information is located. Here's our, here's our water level measurements. And here's the project information right here. Okay, so once you're done previewing it, just exit preview. And if you're ready to export this to a PDF, you can you can select multiple borings if you want to create a single PDF of multiple borings, or you can just select one at a time. It drop down to your project folder. I'm just going to use this one right here and override it. Click export. There you go. You're all done.